Smoke here at Bass Dunker Fishing. Today I want to go over my top five pre-spawn smallmouth baits. Um, this isn't really an area where I've had a lot of experience. Uh, this is the first year where I'm able to actually fish for smallmouth on lakes. Um, never really done it before. I didn't have the lakes near me that I could get on with a small boat to fish for smallmouth, but it's fun. And, and I've already determined what my, my favorite baits are for the pre-spawn and what I feel worked the best for me. But um, number one, without a doubt, is a jerk bait. Um, I throw two types of jerk baits, both Strike King KVD jerk baits. I have the shallow and the deep. The deep has a bigger bill. They also have a little bit different stance when they're resting in the water. Um, the, sh the shallower one sits almost perfectly horizontal where the deeper one kind of has a nose down approach. It's just the way they're weighted, but I've caught fish off both of them. I've caught good fish off both of them. I actually caught my personal best smallie this year off the KVD deep, and I caught a really nice large. My biggest largemouth of the year was caught off the KVD shallow. So very good baits. They're, they're great baits in, in the spring because you can fish them any speed, and all that changes is your cadence and your pause duration, kind of based on the temp, the water temperature and the activity level of the fish. But uh, that you, it also changes how violently you you put that action into the jerk bait. But it's by far my number one way to to catch these smallmouth in in the pre-spawn because you can fish them so many different ways. I throw them on a seven foot medium, medium power, fast action. Abu Garcia Veritas, um, this one's a, a, the original. I actually like the 2.0 better because I feel like I like the action of the rod better. But, and I throw them on 12 or 10 pound test, P-line, 100% fluorocarbon. Um, this year I've been throwing them on 12, both of them. Uh, last year I think I threw my deep ones on 10 and my shallow ones on 12, but the the P line hundred percent fluorocarbon is an absolute must for me. I've actually been fishing with a guy from my bass club quite a bit this year, and he's made the switch. Um, and he's he has seen the difference firsthand, uh, where he was throwing a, a different fluorocarbon, and he he get it. We were roll casting under trees, and of course you're gonna get hung up in trees every once in a while. But he would get hung in a tree, and he'd have to retie. It happened again. He'd have to retie. Where I'd get hung up in a tree, I'd rip it out. Same pound test line, both 100% fluorocarbon. I don't have a nick, he has a nick. Or when we're, when we're fishing these around rock, and they're, they're, they're kind of coming, the, the line's coming against the rock, he's having nicks and having to retie, and, and I'm nick free. So, P line, yes, I have a, I, I'm working with P line this year, but I've been talking about P line for the last three or four years on this channel. And if they dropped me next year, I'm still fishing P-Line fluorocarbon. It's the best fluorocarbon I've ever fished. But 7 foot medium, medium fast, Veritas 2.0. I mean, you can go 6 4 to 1, you can go 7 4 to 1, 7 1 to 1 reel. You're not really moving the bait with the reel. You're, you have slack in the line and you're just kind of picking up the slack. So I would like 7 1 to 1, but it's not really that big of a deal. Number two for me is a flat sided crankbait. I like these Strike King flat sided crankbaits. Um, they get down, you could probably get them down 10 feet um, on, on super light line. I throw, I throw my, my crankbaits this year on 12, so I probably get it down to 8 or 9 feet. But that flat side, those flat sided crankbaits have a really tight wobble, which the fish seem to like. Um, you can throw that on a 7 foot medium. Uh, crankbait rod or a seven and a half foot medium medium crankbait rod um, just to get the distance because they are a little bit lighter obviously you're throwing them on a, I throw them on a crankbait reel and throw them on 12 pound test 100% fluorocarbon so that would be my number two number three for me is a small swim bait um, my swim baits of choice are 95% Kai Tech uh, this is a Kai Tech 3.3 inch I don't even know what they're called anymore. Swing Impact Fat. Um, this is just a cheap jig head because I lost all my moon eyes and they're back ordered right now. So 
my my jig head of choice especially i like 3.3 on pressured bikes um i prefer to throw a little bit bigger but the last lake i was fishing it was uh it's a highly pressured lake so that 3.3 inch was 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 getting it done especially well at least in practice was getting it done but um i like to throw them on that bmc moon eye jig head um it's a really cool jig head i i don't love the keeper um but it i just think having that moon eye gives you a little bit more realistic look and on pressured lakes that's pretty important but um i mean what can you say about kitex kitex are the best swim baits on the market period um when it comes to soft plastic uh swim baits there's a reason why other companies are trying to imitate their design because they're because they're that effective so that'd be number three Number four would be the good old Strike King coffee tube. Best tubes on the market. Um, the best Strike King does something with their plastics that tastes it, it gets the bass to hold on to that bait. Um, but I think you talk to a lot of people, and you talk to a lot of people that aren't sponsored by by any soft plastic company, and coffee tubes are going to be number one. Um, I guarantee you there's a lot of pros out there sponsored by other companies and they still have Strike King coffee tubes in their, in their, in their boat. But great baits. Um, I'm not great with tubes yet. I haven't really had a lot of time working with them. So, but it's definitely a bait I, I want to get familiar with, confident with, and, and, and definitely get very proficient at throwing. Number five would be, especially for smallmouth. A nice small football head jig, especially when, when the water's really cold, uh, where those fish are still on those really steep banks, those chunk rock banks. I like having a football head jig, but I like it light so it doesn't really settle in the cracks and crevices. And it's a smaller profile so that those small mouth can eat it. Um, I'll either fish it on a, tr a chunk trailer or later in the year when, when the activity level and that water gets up and activity gets a little higher, I like to throw it on a... Uh, with a little the zoom ultra vibe crawl just because it has a little bit more action for the legs these the jigs i like to use um kai tech makes some really light ones but i i use the boss jigs i use the boss jigs that i have to put the skirts on you save a lot of money they have must add hooks really solid solid football head jig if you want to save money on good jig heads good jigs check out boss um you can check them out at tackle warehouse they I've had no argue, I've had no problems with these with these jig heads. You, they have every color skirt you can possibly think of. They're easy to do. They come in either I think it's either a four or five pack. Definitely check them out. But that's my number five. So recap: number one for me, jerk bait. Number two, the flat sided crank bait like the Strike King uh, flat side. I think it's a flat side 1.5. Three would be the small Kitex swim baits with uh, a moon eye jig head. Four would be the, the coffee tubes. Five would be the football head jig, a small light football head jig. And all of that's getting fished on P line 100% fluorocarbon, always. So definitely check it out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, tell your friends, and we will see you again soon.